Welcome back to another show of Roommates with your host, Cardiel Jones and Tyvis Powell. Man, good to be back. We got some new and exciting news about, you know, our Buckeyes getting drafted. Um, but first and foremost, Tyvis, what you think about the draft, man? How you think it went? You know, for a lot of guys, you know, I think – a lot of people stock rose and fail. I mean, some people went the rounds I thought they would. Uh, some people went later than I thought that they would. Um, but that's just, you know, that's just how the draft goes, man. You just, you never really know. You know, you get a whole bunch of insight going into it where you think you potentially should go. And sometimes you get, you hear your name before that. Sometimes you hear your name after that. But at the end of the day, it really don't matter. Once you get there, once you in, you in. It's about what you do when you get there. So it really don't matter where you went in the draft. For sure, man. Like you said, once you in, once you get to a team, once you get to organizations, all about how you fit. And talking about how you how some of these guys fit, I didn't see Justin sliding all the way to number uh, eleven to the yeah. Bears out of yeah, all exactly. teams. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, to see three other quarterbacks you taking. Feel, yeah, to see three other quarterbacks taken before him, and then our then another guy that was highly um, sought out for coming into this 2020 season, Sean Way, to see twenty plus DBs drafted before him. Um, which one are you more shocked about, Justin slipping to 11 or Sean Wade slipping to, uh, you know, fifth round? I mean, I'm shocked for both, honestly, because, you know, Justin, obviously, because – and, I mean, like I said, I might be biased, but I, I kind of called it like it is as well. I mean, people know that I call it like it is. Like, Justin, to me, had an uh, incredible season last year. Like, I think he answered a lot of questions. Like, it was games where he threw more touchdowns than incompletions. And for people to question his work ethic or whatever the case may be, like, I just – I don't see how they seen that these other quarterbacks were better than him. Then a report came out today that was talking about that six – teams had him ranked as the number one quarterback in the draft, even over Trevor yeah. Lawrence. So it's it's shocking to me that he fell that far down. It's, it don't make any sense to me. And as for as for Wade, I mean, you know, Wade had a – you know, his, his season was rocky this season. You know, I, he didn't have the best season. Um, and I don't know how teams view him. You know, like he did really well at nickel. And this whole season he played an outside corner where he didn't do too hot. So I don't like, you know, I don't see you never really see nickels getting drafted like first or second round like they, you know, those are specifically for people that come in at corner like lockdown game changing corners and stuff like that. And, you know, obviously teams don't view him that way. I didn't see him dropping all the way down to a fifth round pick. I thought he would go somewhere, you know, third or fourth round that area. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, ultimately they're going to he, – you know, he's in a good situation. You know, Baltimore plays great defense. They run nickel. So he should be good. And he should be a steal as well as long as he gets back to that nickel position. And I'm sure they'll, you know, work with his technique a little bit more at corner. Yeah, I think so as well. I mean – when he first opted out, going into the 2020 season, and he was projected a top 10 pick, and 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 then when he opted out because it looked like the season wasn't going to be played, and, and all the COVID restrictions, things like that. If you were in Sean Way's position, going all your career playing nickel, playing a, a long guys like, um, um, I think he's there with Marshawn Okuda and guys like that, yep. and playing with those guys, and you was a nickel, and you had unbelievable success. Like I said, projected top 10 draft pick, first round for sure. Would you have stay opted out of that season knowing that this is about to be a big season for you I mean, up and coming if you would have played a new position? But yet all the film with you is at this inside nickel and got you talking about you going top 10 first round. Would you have stay opted out of the season? See, now, see, that's the thing. So I see it. I see it from where he saw it and I see it from, you know, an older, wiser uh, standpoint. I think he should have stayed opted out um, because – it, for a lot of reasons, because for one, he was switching his position in a during a pandemic where he didn't get to have a lot of reps. You know, they didn't have OTAs and all that stuff. So it wasn't like he was going to have like a great amount of success at outside corner. The only the only thing that could have came was that he could show that he actually had the ability to play outside. So that's the only positive. That, but I mean, if you play a DB, you're a DB. I mean, you could play anywhere so they should he should have left that as it is but I do get why he came back because you know he wanted to win a national championship you know these is his boys like it would be like if I opted out and all y'all still was there they'd be like man I want to play with my boys one last yeah. time so, <clears throat> yeah 
Like, I know, he, I understand why he did it. Like, he was chasing the championship ring and he wanted to be with his boys. But, you know, from a business standpoint, it probably wasn't a great idea because he did. He lost a lot of money in the draft, but, you know, it can easily get, he can easily win it back. Yeah, for sure. Looking at a guy like him and Wyatt Davis, two guys that were projected going into the 2020 season, um, you know, preseason All-Americans and previous All-Americans in the year before, and, you know, high draft picks, and they both opted out and they both returned. You know, it, it looked like, you know, both of them were opting back into the season, heard of their draft stock because they didn't perform as high as a level that they wanted to and, and some of these draft experts projected. Um, but like you said before, man, they, they in good situations where they can make up for some of those doubters, they can make up for some of the potential money they lost by slipping a little in the draft. So just to get back to a little bit on Justin, man, I, I love the the Chicago situation for him personally. Um, I'm not familiar with what type of offense they're going to run, but I know that it won't be a lot of pressure on Justin. And he's going to learn from two guys that had a lot of success in the league, from Nick Folks and um, Andy Dalton. You know, and Chicago already came out earlier this year saying, you know, when they when they got Dalton, they signed Dalton this offseason that – He's our guy, and and it's the reason why it's only a two year deal. It's the reason why folks are still on the on the um, on the roster because you know I foresee them taking a quarterback in the draft. Did not know they would move up to take one of the top quarterbacks in the draft, yeah. but it was one of those situations to me. I looked at it like, okay, well they get a young guy, you know, through the draft or through free agency, and you have two veteran guys that you really don't see. In a lot of these locker rooms, that two veteran proven guys, Nick Foles, just a Super Bowl MVP, and Dalton played, you know, I think this is going to his 12th or 13th season, yeah. and played a lot of football, got a lot of experience under the belt. And these are two guys that, you know, might not have all the success in the world for us on the field, and that some of these other bigger name quarterbacks has, but they do things the right way. You yeah. never hear about you never heard about you know Dalton or Foles going out and, and, and getting a DUI or or having issues in the locker room with teammates and things like that. So they're doing it the right way and yeah. feels in a position to learn and watch and understand that okay, these are guys that have success on a high level, Nick Foles on the highest level of football. Yeah. Let me watch, let me piggyback, let me take some of their routine and let me add it to my routine. So when I step into these shoes of the Chicago organization, when they give me the keys and say I'm the guy. I hit the ground running. Yeah. And uh, also, it's, it's not a lot of pressure on them. You know, like like you said, they already said that Andy Dalton was going to be the quarterback one coming in. So, you know, for him, he just needs to come in and, you know, work on something every day, you know, pick up something, pick up a new, like, thing, learn something new from these veterans every day. Because it's going, you know, and for some odd reason, and I don't wish it on nobody, but for some odd reason, when quarterbacks come in, first round pick, it's always some point of the season that they always step in and see the field. And when his opportunity comes, he needs to make sure he makes the best of it, you know, because he, you know, Chicago is very hyped up about him. You know, obviously, you know, the Mitchell Trubisky thing wasn't, didn't go the way that, you know, they planned on it to go. So, you know, for him, you know, his expectations is not like through the roof. You know, they just, everybody in Chicago is probably like. Early, early. Yeah, yeah, early. Yes, early. They just like, you know, please just, you know, be better than Mitchell a little bit. You know, they always, he's surrounded by a great defense. You know, they got Khalil Mack, you know, they got Eddie Jackson, all that. So, you know, they're going to get him a lot of opportunities to make plays and stuff like that. Kind of the situation when you came in, you know, the defense was rolling at a certain point at that time. And, you know, they're going to make, make sure that, you know, Justin gets comfortable getting in there and getting reps and stuff like that. So I think, I think the Chicago thing, you know, they, they very creative with play calling as well. You know, they, they know how to mix and match a lot of stuff. So I am very interested to see how he does in that offense. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm excited. Another thing came out when a day or two after the draft, when, uh, you know, they was asking Chicago about the fields pick and things like that. And they said, Hey, you know, um, Dalton is our guy, but we have an unbelievable plan to develop, you know, Justin, which you don't see, in the NFL, you know, it's no more, it's no real time for developing players, right. especially as drafted as early as fields and then moving up, you know, a couple of spots in the draft to get fields. But, you know, so I don't anticipate no early pressure on fields yet. But speaking of early pressure, how do you think Urban Meyer and the Urban Meyer era starts down in Jacksonville? How did you think that his draft went for him and the pressure that Trevor Lawrence is, is going to walk into of not just being an NFL quarterback, not just playing for Urban Meyer, but being the number one <laughs> overall pick. You know, I think, uh, you know, I think Urban did a pretty good job at drafting. The only, you know, the Trevor Lawrence was obvious. It was an obvious pick. You know, mm-hmm. He could have won. I, he could have won him or Justin Fields. You know, either way, he was going to get the right one. And like I said, Trevor Lawrence has been the guy. 
in college for the past four years, three or four years. So it was an obvious pick. Uh, the Travis Etienne pick, you know, that one kind of shocked me a little bit because, you know, they, you know, they had a running back last year, the rookie running back. I, I think his name was Robinson or something like that. He had a, yeah. he had a pretty good season. And they, was, yeah. Yeah, they, and they was very confident in him. And then they went out and signed, you know, they signed Lopes, Carlos Hyde. And then they went and drafted him. But I like I, I played for Urban, so I understand why he did it. You know, he's into that speed stuff. You know, he wanna have that speed and stuff like that. So I understand why he did it. It was kind of it kind of threw me off a little bit, but you know, I'm sure he has a plan for him. Uh, yeah, for sure. Outside, outside of that, you know, like I said, he had a pretty solid draft. He drafted some positions that they needed. You know, I think he got a safety in the third round, which was huge. Hopefully Coach Ash is, you know, coach him up good. <laughs> um and, you know, the expectations for Urban, you know, they the Jacksonville hasn't been good since – hasn't been like a, a really good team in the past couple of years. But, you know, with all of these cap issues and stuff like that, you know, they were able to, you know, sign things – sign players and make play – make players come to Jacksonville and stuff like that. So I think they're going to actually have a pretty good season because a lot of teams lost a lot of good players due to the cap – the cap issues where they had to release veteran guys and stuff like that. So I think Jacksonville actually has a, a shot to actually do something, do better than people think that they will do. Plus it's Urban, you know, Urban, <clears throat> knows how to, he knows how to win. Let's, let's just call it what it is. You know, people have yeah. their opinions about him, but one thing about Urban is he knows how to make people and make teams win games. So yeah. I, think, I, I truly believe he's going to excel in that area and he's going to do better than a lot of people anticipate. Yeah, he's going to put guys in position. And one thing that he always said, and you mentioned, you know, the rookie running back from last year who rushed over 1,000, had over 1,000 yards from scrimmage as an undrafted free agent, I think the first time, and as a rookie, first time in NFL history, then Carlos Hyde, then, then um, Travis from uh, Clem, uh, Clemson. His model on offense, I mean, you guys never heard this, when he coached for Ohio State, you know, it, 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 with running backs, you always want to have a pair and a spare. So you got three really good capable running backs that can potentially be starters anywhere else around the league, you know, it's one of the, it's one of, it's going to uh, force um, competition. And then talking about the safety position, drafting the guy fairly early in the third round and, and they, but they went out to sign the guy Rashard Jenkins in the off season to a pretty uh, a substantial deal, but still bringing in another guy in his position. You know how Urban Meyer is. He's all about competition and competing is going to bring out the best in guys. And, and just thinking about, you know, his, situation with the quarterbacks you know you got a guy Gardner Minshew who's more than capable enough to win and play at a high level and he showed this through his first two three years in the NFL even though the win-loss record might not reflect that but still take a guy number one overall still bring in another quarterback that has success CJ Bethel uh, and San Fran and, and played in the system that they're going to run yeah, you know yeah. it's all about yeah it's all about competition you play with CJ so mm -hmm. it, it's all about competition all across the board and one thing those guys in Jacksonville need to know, and I'm pretty sure they know at a very early age and time in the Urban Meyer era down there, it's all about competing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all about competing. Man. There's no, you know, there's no time for favors. There's no time for a while with the guy last year and all this other stuff. It's all about competing. Yep, for sure. And, 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 another, and speaking of competing, you know, to Urban Meyer's standard and his um, – um, and his logic that the ultimate competitor just tried out for him at tight end. What do you uh, think yeah. about <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Tim Tebow trying Listen, to come back? I, I would be yeah. honest with you. If if <laughs> Urban do swing that, now you know it's gonna be some crazy package that go in that that it like it would it'll create a lot of attention. Like I don't know how good Tim would be at blocking and stuff like that. <laughs> but I, like I, on some tight end at double passes or something like that, like he he get ready up, for it. Yeah, he'd be the type Taysen, that Taysen Hill two point oh. Yeah, like he's the type <laughs> that if he's in the game. Like I, I don't even care. I think he's like thirty three or something. Even if at thirty three, if he comes in the game, like he's gonna get a lot of attention. Like defense is gonna be like, all right, what is why is he in the game? Like yeah, yeah, they so gonna it, come it, some it, type it, of trick. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. So. Hope hope that workout went well with Tebow, but I'm interested to see what what happened uh, there. And um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Urban, you know, shocked the world by signing Tebow at, at tight end and and Tebow go out and make the team, man. So we'll I, listen, see. But that, that thing about Tebow, he definitely <laughs> is a competitor. I mean, the man, yeah, the highest man. You know, he 
he was arguably one of the best college football players to play at the time. So, you know, he – yeah, he definitely got it, man. man he got that too, boy. And with Urban. You know, Urban going to bring it out of him again. So, yeah, yeah. I would be shocked. Yeah, but switching gears a little bit, man, from this previous draft and, and that's on the two forward to and overseeing this upcoming 2021 season. But, you know, if you had a crystal ball and you were peaking at this time next year, what names from this Ohio State team are we talking about as early draft picks or guys to surprise this 2021 season that haven't been played yet? We go into our crystal ball that's going to make headways as rookies in the NFL. Well, I mean, off the top of the head, Alave is definitely – Alave and Wilson off the top. Like, <laughs> off the top of the head is for sure. Um, yeah. and, the funny, and the funny thing is I seen uh, – I actually was on Twitter uh, yesterday and they had like a way too early draft pick. And they had Garrett Wilson going like fifth to the Jets or something like that. And then they had uh, – they even had seven banks going in the first round and like the 26th pick or something like that. I was like, really? Okay. So, yeah, you know. You know, Seven will be the guy this year coming in. You know, he's the one that has the most experience. Um, I, I definitely – he got the talent to do it. Um, he – it's been times last year he showed glimpses and flashes of being a really locked down corner, you know. So, I, I, I'm i very interested to see that he – if he pulls it off, which I really believe he can because I played with his brother, uh, Marcel. His brother plays for uh, the 49ers, the safety, actually. And, you know, very talented dude. And I see he's got the same talent in his brother. So I'm, I'm pretty sure he's capable of that's, doing it. Uh, that's funny, man. I, I always wouldn't – I always view Banks as a, as a safety. That's what his Even brother though, like. Yeah, I always view him as because he's so bottom heavy and he got good ability, got good ball skills, but he don't, ha- he don't have the top end speed that we usually see from a, a top – corner from Ohio State he not saying he's not capable but I just always re- <laughs> yeah I just I just view him as a safety but clearly yeah like I said um he will he, he will actually if I was looking at my crystal ball he would actually be my sleeper in the first second round type yeah. guy that you know that's going to the season with you know I want to say low expectations but no one out there saying that he's going to be the next Marshawn Lattimore things like that so he's going to fly on the radar well enough to shock you at the end of the season and look back at his stats like, oh, my God, this guy had a really good season. And I think a lot of that pressure to come off, you know, the guys on the back end with these younger guys emerging uh, this upcoming season. And then clearly, like I said, Wilson and Olave is the two guys that anyone can think of and point out and say these will be the two next first rounders from Ohio State if they continue to have, you know, careers as as they went so far. But um like I said, not trying to look to in the future too much. What did you see or what did you like from guys from this past spring game, especially the quarterback position? The, the position, the position and, and if, I had to pick, if I had to pick one to two positions that we had to pretty much address immediately, clearly it's the quarterback losing Justin Fields, and then clearly it's going to be the defensive backs because hey, of the lack of their luster. Lack of their luster season. Exactly that, who we, that's that, who everybody yeah, looked at. <laughs> oh, for sure. With the lack of their luster season that these guys had overall as a unit, not just individual players. So, But during the spring game a few weeks ago, what did you think about the performance of individual players? If it was an individual player that stood out to you or the performance of players or a position, okay. a position group? I'm going to do both. I got – so the first, I'm going to do position. The quarterback group absolutely killed it. I thought they – the future's definitely bright. It doesn't matter which one of them win it. I think all three of them are capable. Even the freshman, the, the, the true freshman yeah. was the one that kind of shocked me the most. I was like, man. He threw the first touchdown. Yeah, he was balling. I <laughs> did who is this? <laughs> but anyways, him, that, that whole group, you know, even CJ – you know, he did really well. I can see why, you know, he's favored to win the position. He had a very solid spring game. Uh, individual player was Marvin Harrison. Ooh, the, hey. He a baller. Yeah, from his daddy. But yeah, he a baller, man. I, I, you know, yeah. usually, you know, you, you hear about people and their kids and stuff. But, man, he he legit, man. He was he did his thing for sure. So, I'm definitely excited about him. As from a defensive standpoint, you know, we had a, we had one interception. I would have liked that scene more, but I mean, I get it's the spring game. The quarterback with the quarterback play the way they were playing, you know, it was kind of hard. They was putting the ball in way in spots that only their receivers can get it. So I do I get that, but you know, I like to see more turnovers and stuff like that in the spring game from the defensive back. I'm not really a hundred percent sure because it was a lot of guys who I didn't get a chance to see 
that I will I think Ohio State will be depending on moving into the season in the uh, secondary. But you know the young guys have definitely gotten better. You know it's a lot of people that showed that they can come in and rotate at the uh, outside position because last year obviously the debt was a huge issue for the secondary. You know Coach Combs likes to rotate corners, but he didn't have that last year. So the good thing is that, you know, players came in and were showing that they were capable of actually getting in the game and getting real reps. So that yeah. was huge for us during the season. Yeah, for sure. And I think the position group that clearly I'm going to highlight was the quarterbacks um, because we, we are replaced and we have to replace one of the top quarterbacks in the country last year. Um, and one of the best guys to ever do it at Ohio State. And those guys play well, all three of them, man. You rarely see a spring game uh, at any school where each quarterback is going, throwing over, you know, 100, 150, 160 yards plus, you know. So, and, and um, I anticipate that battle going into um, – it's going to lead into the summer and lead into camp. And I, and hopefully by the final week of camp, we have, you know, Ryan Day have named the starter. One of these guys has separated himself from the others. And – but – Flipping sides a little bit, I think the group that I was most anxious to see was the front seven. Mm -hmm. Because for one, we lost a guy like Tommy Tucky out to the Browns, and then uh, Garrett Haskell didn't play the whole, um, he didn't participate the whole spring, and then losing all your linebackers and not having that dominant Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa, Chase Young, Taekwon Lewis that we used to see over the last few years. I wanted to see which one of those guys would step up, and I want to see some of these young linebackers fly around, which they did. But I think that's a, that's going to be also a position that I keep an eye on this upcoming season and going into camp is that front seven because we lost so much. And it just haven't been the front seven. Well, I want to say the whole front seven. It just haven't been that D line or that yeah, dominant yeah. defensive yeah, lineman yeah, that, right. that we used to see. And so I'm excited to see which one of those guys step up and, and take the reins and, and, you know, everybody screaming this guy name and, yeah. and potential it's top five yeah. pick. It's going to be still for the defense. We, we definitely yeah. need that. I mean, think about it. We had so much success because we always had that, that defense in, that game-changing defense in. Yeah. And, you know, without that, that's going to be rough. So it's it's a dire need. We need somebody to step up and fill that void right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. It's, and thinking and talking about filling voice, man, uh, uh, changing the subject and, and changing the tempo a little bit, man, before we wrap it up. Man, what do you think about um, Jameson Williams transferring to Alabama, man? One, I, of, our, one of our projected <laughs> top receivers, you know. Um, I ain't going to lie. A guy who came in, a guy who came in and played and had some big catches and some critical points of his short, brief career at Ohio State. What do you think about him joining pretty much the dark side? <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> one, like. I get it. I, I I truly get it. Like I can't. I'm not gonna be like I said. I'm I'm authentic with it. I I keep it real all the time. And I get it. Like you know, you you come in this year. You know, you're supposed to be the third receiver, third top receiver, and second. You know, no, he wasn't. He came in. And was supposed to be the second guy. Okay. Well, he was supposed last to be year. Last team. year. Last year. Last. No, you're right. This year. He yeah. Was this third. year. I'm talking last about this year. year. Yeah. Last yeah, year. This year. Third. He's supposed to be like pretty much the third guy. And you know, like. Like just he want to go to the league too, like you know, the, he the guy has league dreams. You know, he wants he needs his reps. You know, and right now Olave and Wilson is the guy. Marvin Harrison Jr. just had a great spring game. You know, they got all these top these five star recruits coming in at receiver, and it's tough. You know, you can get lost up in the shuffle. You know, and for him, like he got to get his tape out there. You know, he got to do what's best for him to get to the next level. So, I mean, him going to Alabama, I mean, I get that. Like you, they just had like. Five, but eight receivers just went first round in the past two years. Four or five receivers went first round. So I, I get, I understand why he did that. Like, like right now, slowly they becoming like wide receiver you type thing. So, like he's gonna go to the to the best situation to help maximize him to help himself get to that next level and get to the league. So I, like I said, I yeah. understand why he did it. I, I can't, I can't blame him because I mean, if you're not gonna get a lot of burn at Ohio State, you need to go somewhere where you can get a lot of. Uh, playing time where you can get your film out there so I yeah guess. yeah for sure and like I said I, I get it and I wish the best for him but it's tough yeah. to see him go but um, I mean he he came into Ohio State you know him and Olave he was pretty much going to be the second guy then Wilson came on and he kind of slowly slipped to third and then you know they keep getting these top routes. I think after when this freshman class coming in the summer, I think they got the number one receiver in this group as well, the following number one receiver next year as well. So he potentially for the next two years be on a, on a team with three number one receiver 
prospects out of high school in the last two years, three years. Right. You know, so um, and, and you start to look at your career you, and you start to understand there's only one football is only, you know, and um, it's going to be spread around to a lot of different guys who's going to limit your opportunities. And I think, you know, from watching this spring game at, at um, Alabama and um, clearly they were still searching for their quarterback. I think Bryce Jones, I think it's his last name, Jones, right? He threw the ball, I think, over 35, 40 times. They're trying to find their guy down there. And just looking at the receiver play down there, I think he walking into a good situation where he can potentially be the number one guy as soon as he stepped foot in Tuscaloosa. He definitely, so, he definitely got the talent for it, for sure. He showed that. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. So definitely, man, good luck to him. Wish he would have stayed, wish the circumstance was a little bit different, such to see him going to Alabama, but wish yeah, nothing yeah. but the best for him. I'm and, sure. Um, I'm pretty sure if things work out, we will cross paths again with you. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I mean, and thinking about guys crossing paths with Ohio State and and, and that potential critical time of the year, man, I can tell you something right now. Looking back to two years ago, I did not want to see Ohio State play LSU and Joe Barrow in the national championship game. I was biting my nails. <laughs> listen, I mean, I listen. didn't want to see. I didn't want to see. I didn't want to see Ohio State lose to Clemson the way they did, and I didn't want to see. You know, uh, Oklahoma clearly – I mean, LSU clearly lose to – I forgot where they played that year. Yeah. But I was this just like, oh, God, this is going to be bittersweet. The world wants to see it, though, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, do you yeah. know Joe Burrow would have had – listen. I don't want to talk about he it. He would have tried listen, I'm, to I'm go glad it didn't crazy. happen. <laughs> all I got to say, I'm glad it didn't happen. We can only reminisce and just say what would have happened and what we all thought would have happened. He would have tried but... it, man. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I, I, I will say that he would have had to get away from Chase Young and all that. Yeah. He and we solid corners at the time. So uh, it, it might not went the way he think, but well, we all can it. say we all can say it would have been a hell of a game. Uh wish it would have happened, but I, me personally, I'm glad it didn't. So <laughs> <laughs> well, man, that's it for another episode, another week of roommates, man. Uh stay tuned. Join us next week. Cardell Jones, Tyvis Powell, signing out.